welcome to the first episode of EM Weekly, and now your host, Todd DeVoe. Hi, and welcome to episode one of the EM Weekly podcast, and I am your host, Todd DeVoe, and thank you for being here today. So why EM Weekly? Well, we're going to discuss topics that anyone involved in emergency response, disaster response, crisis response, and managing these issues and leadership in general. And we're, you know, things including like volunteer management, uh, disaster recovery, uh, mitigation, conti- uh, continuity of operations. These are going to be the topics that we're really going to get into. So this is the place that you want to be. I'm looking at the EM weekly as an extension of a classroom. As a professor in, uh, in emergency management, I continue to uh, teach my students on a daily basis, right? Um, I have them calling me, emailing me years after they've graduated and, and have moved on from our program just to talk about different things that are going on. And that was the, the idea that we had here for this podcast. So as parts of this podcast are going to be focused on a new emergency manager where training and education meets the real world. At EM Weekly, we're going to take questions from listeners um, at the, uh, if you go to www.emweekly.com and you hit the ask button, there's a section there where you can uh, ask any question that you have regarding EM Weekly. And we'll also have uh, college instructors on here to discuss the trends in EM education on the direction of higher education programs. And we'll also have world-class trainers from all disciplines to discuss ongoing training programs and keeping EM EM's proficient in our in our uh, in our craft, all right? So we're going to talk about technology. We're going to bring you the latest technology that will make our jobs more proficient and productive, including things like communication tracking system programs, uh, programs that you can use to write your IAP, your incident, or your uh, after action plans, um, and uh, to make some quicker, easier uh, things like assessment tools um, and more. We're going to take book reviews. Um, I love to read. I really do. Uh, I read everything that you could possibly think about. But anyway, I also want to take time to share these books that I found that uh, were really important to me. And if you guys, again, go to um, emweekly.com, click on the Ask button, and uh, you have ideas uh, and suggestions for books, I'll, I'll always be happy to take them. I also want to hear your comments on books that I've read uh, and different opinions, and we'll definitely put those on our later podcast and um, also uh, at the uh, in the blog section. You know, Reading is not just fun. Uh, even like some of the books like uh, One Second After, for instance, that's one of the books we're going to discuss, even though it's an older book. Um, there are really principles that you could take in there of, of response and also uh, recovery that you don't really think about as emergency managers on, on the outside. I also want to discuss uh, some of the leadership books that are out there. There's some really good ones specifically associated with uh, disaster response and emergency response and you know, all the way from things that are happening now and the new trends that are going on. Uh, and there's some really good leadership books out there that I want to discuss. And we want to bring these authors on as well uh, and, and, and interview them. We're also going to take the best of what we've done here at EM Weekly, and we're going to create an or, a quarterly magazine, an EM Quarterly. And, and again, here's an opportunity for emergency managers to express themselves if you guys are interested in, in putting articles in the uh, EM Weekly uh, or the EM Quarterly, you're more than welcome to please send us uh, at ask again, or you can email us um, at our email addresses. And the blog, of course, a lot of this stuff will be going to the blog because you can't have a website today without a blog. And not only um, in the blog have articles in there, it also have the show notes that we have, uh, the transcripts that we have from uh, the podcast. So if you want to read them, uh, and you can always go back and take a look at uh, the information that we're sharing there, uh, all the links to the technology and also the books and uh, the other things that we're going to be doing with EM Weekly will go into that section. In interviews, we have lined up some of the leaders in our industry. Uh, we're going to ask them what they do, how they do it, what their best practices are. We're going to pick their brains. We're going to see what's going on inside their head. And uh, we have a bunch of guys and gals lined up right now that are going to take us um, and, and make us better emergency managers all the way around because these guys have been doing it and gals have been doing it. And uh, I'm excited about having a lot of the uh, the people who have agreed to come on the show already. Uh, I'm excited the fact that we just are launching, and we already have 20 people um, that have agreed to come on and, and be interviewed. And that is a testament to uh, this platform uh, because, like I said, we haven't even rolled out episode one 
because this is episode one that we're talking about here, right? And we already have those guys and gals lined up to, uh, uh, to talk to us. In the news. So we're going to do uh, Ian Weekly here. We're going to do in the news, which is we're going to talk about the responses that are going out there, the large scale response. You know, we're going to talk about people that went to Katrina. We're going to talk about people that went to uh, Sandy, uh, you know, the world uh, events that are happening around the world, uh, including uh, the Greek um, crisis going on with the refugees. These are all topics that are in the news that are really important to us um, as emergency managers and, again, to see what's going on from the people that are on the front lines of these events. The Volunteer Spotlight. Uh, we will discuss various volunteer programs from around the world. Uh, volunteers make up the bulk of disaster responders. So the topics we'll discuss will be uh, volunteer management programs, their successes, back practice, best practices, and more. So if you think your program should be spotlighted, uh, please contact us again at www.emweekly.com at the Ask button um, and uh, send us your comment, and we'll get back to you. And again, you can always reach out to us via email as well. And now, a short commercial break. 315 and 314, there is at least one person that's been shot. Somebody is still shooting in sight. 450, have a party shot here at the hot. Are you ready for the unthinkable? Call our friends at High Speed Tac Med. They provide custom emergency planning and training that saves lives. With years of experience in law enforcement, search and rescue, responding to and managing large-scale incidents, HSTM will evaluate and prepare written plans, training sessions, drills, and debriefs, leaving you with the necessary tools and experience that can save lives. Call HSTM today to discuss your specific needs, and the staff of High Speed Tac Med will help ensure that you're ready and are in complete compliance. Call High Speed Tac Med today. Day, 805-419-0024. Again, that's 805-419-0024. The friendly staff at HSTM is standing by. Hi, this is Todd DeVoe, the host of Ian Weekly's podcast. If you're trying to reach people in the emergency management and response space, Ian Weekly is a place for you to advertise. Each week, we are bringing in guests from around the world to talk about best practices and trends in emergency management and response. We also have the blog on EM Weekly's website and the EM Quarterly e-magazine. For more information, please email brian at brian at emweekly.com. EM Weekly is a division of the WEMT Institute. And welcome back from the commercial. So, this part here I really kind of always feel weird about talking about, but uh, I think it's kind of important specifically since it's our first uh, podcast. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. So currently, I'm a professor um, at a local community college, and I teach emergency management and homeland security. Uh, I've been doing that since um, 2007. Wow, it's been a long time, 10 years. Uh, I also teach uh, nonprofit leadership and management at a local university here in uh, Orange County, California. So a little bit of back of my background. So I started a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away called Upstate New York, and I started as a volunteer firefighter. So maybe that's a little bit why I like uh, and understand the ideas of uh, volunteerism and emergency services. Um, I did that for a bit, and then in 1991, uh, I joined the United States Navy. I was a corpsman, served with the United States Marine Corps. Uh, most of my time I spent with the Marine Corps, so I know more about the Marines than I do about the uh, uh, Blue Water Navy. So I'm a green water guy, or I call the amphibious side of the uh, uh, the United States Navy. There I met some really great people, and I have some lifelong friendships uh, with a lot of the guys who I served with. So uh, for that, I am very grateful for everything that the Navy uh, gave me. Uh, after I got out of school, I used my GI Bill, and uh, I went back to school, received my Bachelor's of Science uh, from the Uni- from the University of Laverne. Uh, in public administration. And a few years later, uh, I went back to school and received my master's of public administration with a concentration in urban management uh, from Cal State University at Fullerton. The reason why I took public administration uh, back then, a couple of reasons. One is emergency management programs weren't widely known. Uh, there weren't a lot of them out there. There were a few. And on the education side, they fell under the sociology departments and things like this. And I felt that public administration would give me a rounder education about things that EM played into. I truly believe this today. 
um, and this could be you know debated, but even for people who are looking to go into the public safety arena, I think public administration is a great degree. I will defend that, and um, yeah, so that's that's kind of why I, I chose that. Urban planning as my concentration for my master's was again because it really talked about things that you need to do and understand on the recovery phase of a disaster regarding rebuilding your your city after the city uh, fell apart after a disaster of an earthquake Katrina for instance is still in the rebuilding uh, process and we can even apply some of those principles that we have here uh, in urban planning and urban management into places like uh, our slow moving disasters such as um, Detroit for instance where you wouldn't think of it as being a, an emergency management need specifically because it's not the, what we can tr- traditionally would think of as an emergency. But let's think about things that are happening in Detroit. Are their services overwhelmed? Yes. Are they underfunded? Yes. Do they have some serious issues? Yes. Could you use the principles of emergency management to manage that crisis that's going on over there right now? Of course you can. And I, that's why I think that with EM and in the education of EM, are we, um, are we shorting ourselves specifically on that? So that is that is really my, my, my background uh, when it comes to my education. So what did I do when I, when I got done? Well, um, I worked uh, for a while uh, for a couple of local cities. And the, the reason why I'm kind of being, being vague on the cities is not that I I'm ashamed of, of what I did or anything by, by that means, or I just don't really have their permission to uh, uh, to talk about this in, in this setting here. Um, but you can you could probably Google me and find out the cities that I worked in for sure. And I had a lot of experience uh, working in. I worked for a private ambulance company for a while when I first got out of the Navy. I went from there and I went to a local municipality in Orange County. I left that one. I went to another local municipality working for the police department uh, as the emergency manager and I uh, did that for a while. And then I went in back into education uh, where I am today teaching. So I think a well-rounded background is very, very, very important uh, in emergency management. And in some cases, people get stuck at one job or the other. Uh, they're never growing. We have to find ways to grow. And I don't say it's a bad thing. I have some really great friends that are great emergency managers who worked for the same city for 30 years, and they retired out. Um, I have some other friends who have bounced around and, and are really good, well-rounded emergency managers. And when it comes to crisis, uh, those well-rounded emergency managers uh, do a great job. You know, I have friends that are in state government, and they do awesome jobs and, and uh, are really proud of some of the work that they've done uh, in EM. I have friends that work in on the volunteer disaster response. As a matter of fact, just to, for full disclosure, I also uh, volunteer for a, uh, a national organization. And again, I don't want to say their name yet because I don't have permission to, uh, to use it. And I want to be sure that everything that we do here on EM Weekly, uh, we have permission. We have the blessing of the people who we're going to talk about. I, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to be that group that throws names and drops names without uh, without them really knowing what we're doing and, and that they understand what we're going to be talking about. I do plan on, though, however, taking a really good look um, at policies and procedures and things that we've done, basically because I want to make sure that we are giving the full picture here. We're not trying to paint a rosy picture of what's happening with, um, with EM uh, in general, right? We want to have a raw look at what we're doing in this field. And I think that's really important. And the guests that are coming on, I've told them all, um, yeah, we are going to be asking the tough questions. We're going to be fair here for sure. We are going to delve deep into the weeds in some cases. And in some cases, we're just going to take a high level, you know, 10,000 foot look at what's going on in the industry. I definitely want to make sure that everybody understands that we are going to be fair here. And I think that that's going to be are uh, the difference between us and, and, and other organizations, or I shouldn't say other organizations, but us and other podcasts that came in the, in the uh, uh, before us. And there's some really good work out there, too. Uh, one of the gentlemen who we're going to be interviewing, he has his own podcast as well. Uh, and when it comes time for him to be on, we're going to discuss his podcast, the work he's been doing, and how uh, we're going to move emergency management forward um, as a profession. And 
anything that you take away from EM Weekly specifically is that we want to be pushing our profession forward. I hope that if you are here listening today and you continue to subscribe and listen to our podcast, that we all want to move emergency management and emergency response um, agencies forward to make us all better to learn from each other and i think that's a, this is a community that we're going to create here so we can all learn from each other i'm continuously learning that's why in the section we're talking about reading i do read a lot and i do like to see what's going on you know and what other people think and how we can implement uh, these programs around the uh around the country around the world Back to the volunteer here thing for a second. I'm sorry. I sound like I'm scatterbrained a little bit, but back to the volunteer thing here. I really like the volunteers. I've been involved with community emergency response teams. Uh, I've developed uh, two of them, and I was I was fortunate to have great volunteers. We revamped one. So one that was developed from the ground up. The other one, we took an existing program and, and uh, uh, revamped it a little bit and added some stuff to it. And it's, it's a, still to this day, it's very successful. Um, it's a model. Um, for for cert programs uh, throughout the state, and I was not again fortunate in Orange County to be working with a great group of volunteer coordinators um, from various different cities, and we created a cert mutual aid program that uh, is a model again. Uh, it's an award winning program, um, I'm proud to say, and uh, yeah, so we took that program and and we and we expanded upon it, and it's it's awesome, and I got to work with guys and gals from. The state of California, through uh, LA County, Orange County, San Bernardino County, Riverside County, San Diego County, um, Santa Barbara County, uh, the Imperial Counties, um, Sacramento County, uh, those are San Francisco. I'm trying to think of where else I was working. That's that's just California alone. Um, and we also got to teach certain programs um, in Canada as well, uh, Montreal and. Uh, Calgary were the two places where I got to go and, and teach uh, a great group of people um, how to protect their community after disasters. You know, we don't hear a lot about those disasters up in Canada. And uh, to my Canadian brothers and sisters, yeah, I, I, I understand that we have them up there. And, and uh, you guys are, are doing a great job up there as well with your programs. And um, it was so exciting to be able to go teach in Montreal one of the greatest cities in the world to go teach a cert program up there. And it was so fun. And, and the, the people were so receptive to, to learning and to uh, putting these actions uh, or their practice into actions. So it was great. And uh, Calgary as well. It was another great group of people up there. Uh, and again, it was the, the hosts were wonderful. And it was such a great experience to, to be able to be in Canada teaching a, a uh, quintessential Los Angeles County started program, you know, or Los Angeles City, I should say. Sorry, out there, my <laughs> friends from LA City that actually were research started. So yeah, I mean, the, the, these programs are are awesome, and I think that if you're here for the first time in trying to figure out what emergency management is and what your uh, what your role will be and 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 whatnot. I want to make a community here. And that's my goal uh, specifically with this podcast is to make a, a great community of, of, uh, of emergency managers, a great community of emergency responders uh, working together and for what the, the one purpose, the one goal of having a safer, a safer uh, response agencies, safer communities and, um, and to recover from these disasters in a timely manner to where we can make people whole again, or at least as close to whole as possible. That one volunteer agency that I, I continue that I'm volunteering with right now, the international disaster response agency that it is. And that's the goal there. And it's amazing to go to these disasters where you have volunteers that are putting their time and their, and their efforts into cleaning up these disasters and the recovery aspect of it. And to see the hugs and the tears that, that, that roll down people's faces as far as the tears and the hugs that they give out because you're, you're touching these people at the worst possible time. And I think that if we can keep that in mind as well as a profession, that we really are touching people at the worst possible time in their lives. And that we have the ability to make them whole again, or at least as close to whole as possible. That's powerful right there. And that's, that's why I love this job. <clears throat> that's why I love being in emergency management. That's why I love teaching emergency management. That's why I, I, 
my friends, uh, you know, that aren't in the job kind of make fun of me because I eat, breathe and sleep this stuff. And, 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 uh, I really do. I really am passionate about this. People I surround myself for the most part understand that. And, uh, even though they, they, they kid me a little bit, but it is a passion. It really is. And, and I'm really happy to be sharing this with you and my experiences. I'm happy to be bringing people here, uh, to be interviewed that are going to be sharing these experiences. And, and I know that the people that are listening, um, at least I hope that the people that are listening are going to get that out of it too. And, and just be passionate about, uh, emergency management and, and how we can help people, uh, just across the, the world. And not just on those, you know, what we practice for here in California, specifically the big earthquake, you know, but we have the right now the rains and the floods and we have um, across the country and up into Canada and, and uh, over in Mexico and, you know, Australia with the issues that are over there with the fires and whatnot. And, you know, the crisis that we've uh, responded to with the, uh, the refugee crisis that's going on. That's all emergency management could use those principles that we have here and do a lot of good. So anyway, um, I'm going to check, I'm going to close out right here with uh, just a, again, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and uh, you can contact me at the Ask Todd button uh, at the www.emweekly.com. And I'm looking so forward to uh, meeting you guys and, and making this a great community. Thank you for listening to episode one of EM Weekly. Be sure to find us on iTunes and subscribe. Be sure to share this with your fellow EMs. And also visit www.emweekly.com. Subscribe to our newsletter, check out our free downloads, and much more to come. Again, thanks for listening to emweekly.com.